All right. So uh, it's going to be Stefan, who, who is an apprentice at uh, Kit Concepts. Um, and he's going to talk about um, a use case that have been implementing um, the Elmods Association. Uh, is a big, big organization, a uh, big scientific organization in Germany. And they are using, uh, they are using Plone to, uh, to make sure everybody can uh, connect. Uh, so that's the use case Stefan is about to present. Um, I hope we can sort out the audio issue here. So bear with me. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. How Plone helps connect over 40,000 science. I will tell you how we managed to register new services for the Helmholtz Cloud and what we did there. So, first, let me introduce the client. Oh, there's some delay, but. Yeah, let me introduce the client, um, which was the Helmholtz Centrum in Berlin. Um, and they actually have 1,100 employees. They are located in uh, Berlin. And they are part of the Helmholtz Association, which is the biggest association of uh, research centers in Germany. And they are also publicly funded, so uh, yeah, public client kind of. Um, yeah, what is the Helmholtz Association of Research Centers? That's the, the biggest association, as I just said, uh, of research centers in Germany. And they have over 40,000 uh, employees and scientists working for them. They contain out of 18, uh, research centers in, in Germany, which are evenly spread there. And well, they share some infrastructure, but they also have like, every institute has their own infrastructure. So that leads us to the, to the problem that we have, which is, oh, we can see here, uh, they are quite evenly spread around Germany. So uh, yeah, we need to somehow connect them. And this leads us to the question, how do we connect them? And um, for that, we want to gather all the IT services that each uh, research center provides at one place. And so we can use that data uh, later to do whatever we want with that data. So maybe one research center has like an application for, for communication and the other one has that one too. We don't need two applications. We can yeah, maybe use one of them and get rid of, uh, rid of the other one. Um, so what do we want to do? We want to add a registration process for those services. So like, for example, you work, work at, at a research center and you want to tell which uh, IT services you have, so you can like register them. That process should be easy and self-explaining. So there are no barriers for, for like the research centers to, um, to register the services. Let me quickly get a drink. Uh, okay, so next. What are the problems that we are so need to solve? Um, to register a service, we need information about it. So what's the name of the service? What does it do? Where is it located at? And many other information. Um, I think it's best if I clarify that on, a, on an example. So for example, the the research center in Jülich has a has an IT service that's called Rocket Chat, which is basically a communication application in the browser 
where you can like do the um, yeah the communication in the um, for the internal communication, uh, but it's only used in Yulish. So why don't we provide that application for every other research center as well? So what will happen now is someone from Yulish will register that service to the application we will build and then they can like choose if they want to use it everywhere. Um, yeah, so yeah, in the application there, we have all the, um, in the form, we have all the necessary information like the name of the IT service, the description, what it does, and also some contact information if there are any open, open questions. Um, okay, what, what else do we have uh, regarding problems and what do we need to solve? So it should be easy, as I just said, easy and poss if possible for everyone in the research center to register such a IT service. Unfortunately, it was also a little bit of time pressure in the project. Um, and yeah, we also need to like define the, all the, the details. But we figured it would be like perfect if we use Plone for that uh, because of a lot of reasons, which I will explain later. And uh, yeah, what we also need to consider is that this is uh, like some collaboration, some cooperation project. So we need to transfer our knowledge about like technical questions and also Volto and Plone to the client. And they also helped us with like a lot of stuff and implementation of like technical questions. And what we also need to do is we need to connect the whole Plone uh, site to the AI of Helmholtz so they can use one access point and they don't have to have another account on Plone. Um, next one. So what, what's our approach? So we want to implement an application form where you can put all the, the information about the IT service you provide. And then that one runs through a like, process um, of registration with a workflow we can implement in, in Plone. Uh, and Plone came in quite handy for that because it's known for, um, for its complex workflow uh, handling. And we also need a validation for the form. So you can only send in a form that's validated, of course, it makes sense to do that beforehand. Um, and we also have like some additional um, yeah, stuff we can do, for example, add comments to the application after we send it in, maybe we forget to, to add some information about it. And also um, we can send it back as the reviewer if there's something wrong with it, although the uh, validation passed. Mm. So the first part of the, um, of the project would be the, the application form. Um, what does that mean? So everyone knows what a, what a form is. We have about 20 predefined fields they use like text fields, we have drop downs, we have booleans, whatever, where you can put all the information. Um, then we have a validate button on the end, which validates the entries. So as a user, you can see beforehand if there's something wrong with your application. Um, and you can only send it in if you have like, if the validation passes, of course. Um, and the, the validation only happens in the, in the back end, so it's easy to maintain. And uh, yeah, but we, we have to trigger it then manually, but I think that's, that's kind of the normal way to do that. Um, yeah, this is how it looks like, just a, just a part of it, just, just like a normal form uh, where you can put in the information. Um, exactly. The next step would be 
to connect that to the Helmholtz AAI. Um, Jens actually did that, so thank you. But <laughs> um, yeah, the Helmholtz AI uses OpenID Connect, so we just need to connect Plon to that, or just, but we connect Plon to that. And um, then Plon gets the permissions of the Helmholtz user. And so they can, um, yeah, fill out the registration process. Mm, let's get to the workflow and the transitions. As said, we, um, the workflow was rather complex. So, so we can get through the registration process and build it into Plone. We had five different workflow states and like transitions from each and every one to like the other, the other uh, workflow states. And the user or the, the portfolio manager was able to switch between them. Between them. Uh, we moved the, the workflow transitions to a button, to an inline button. So we could get rid of the, the sidebar uh, because yeah, the normal user shouldn't be able to, to see that. And then, um, yeah, the normal user can create an application, send it in, and then the, the managers can review it, send it back, or, um, or yeah, the application is succeeded. That's also a possibility, of course. Um, uh, also, the user could, could withdraw the application for whatever reasons. And uh, also, we uh, integrated that the same research centers are able to view their research centers applications uh, with the help of Plone's reader role. Um, yeah, this is the workflow diagram. So it's, I mean, it's not super complex, but there were some tricks in it and yeah, to implement that. Um, Next one would be how do we validate all the entries in the in the form? Um, for that, we created a custom endpoint in on the Plone REST API, where all the fields are sent to, and we get back a validated like um, yeah, a validation. Uh, luckily, all the validation stuff, which was quite complex, was implemented by the client after we explained them how you can uh, create a custom endpoint. So, yeah, they took that away. For, uh, they, they managed to do that for us. Um, and then the endpoint returns a success or like an error for, for every field if the validation fails. And then they are displayed in line. And you can fix them or you can just, yeah, not do it, but I guess you want to fix them. Um, yeah, and we also allowed validation in the edit view and in the normal view. So yeah, you can do both. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. That was the last step before we could uh, put everything together. Um, we simplified like the, the processes, simplified UX a little bit. That was, uh, that was, that were the last steps. Of course, we, we added tests for everything and we, yeah, did some manual testing with the, with the client and we polished it and we managed to finish the, the project in time. And I think with, with great success because the client is already using it. Um, the, the release went also smooth. It all uh, works on their infrastructure. So they did all the, the infrastructure stuff and release management. And I think also great success was that we shared a lot of knowledge about Plone and Volto and worked quite nice together with the, with the client. And yeah, almost all, every part of the project was built in cooperation with them. Yeah, to the, to the aftermath, as said, testimonial, 
um, the project will also continue. The next step on the agenda is that they will build a contact database, which will be implemented with clone as well. Um, the front end will, will continue with UJS instead of Volto, but that's no problem since, yeah, clone and the rest API is agnostic and they can use whatever front end they want. And yeah, it's also, also my first experience with a cooperation project. And for my part, it was successful. Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>